All right, everyone, I think we'll go ahead and get started. I, I rang the doorbell, but I don't see a green light. I see the green light. <laughs> All right, well, welcome to the August 11th, 2021 meeting of the Edina Planning Commission. Through this month, public officials can participate in public meetings virtually for up to three meetings if they have medical concerns for themselves or family members. We are using WebEx to connect those of us in the room with remote participants. Before we begin, there are a few things I'd like to cover hope, uh, for uh, participants um, in the meeting. Uh, so the city is committed to continuing to receive and hear your input on matters. We've been collecting input through voicemail and through our engagement website, bettertogetheredina.org. It is important to know that all of your comments that have been submitted have been received and read prior to the start of this meeting. You do not need to submit the same feedback in another way. All feedback is considered equally, regardless of the way in which it was submitted. Tonight we have one public hearing. Individuals who want to provide testimony remotely for a public hearing can call 1-800-374-0221 with conference ID 479-58150. Individuals in the room will be invited to come forward first to speak to the commission. Then we will hear from those of you who have called in. Everyone is allowed to speak for up to three minutes. After giving your full name and address, the green light on your podium will turn on. Uh, when you have 30 seconds remaining, the yellow light will go on. And then when you're out of time, the red light will turn on. Staff will let anyone who calls in know if they go over 30 minutes. <laughs> three minutes. Uh, remember, you do not need to call in or comment live tonight if you've already provided feedback. Um, also, do not repeat any information already presented. Provide testimony if you have new comments or information to bring forward. Uh, it's my first night sharing, so I have the, the script tonight. Uh, thanks in advance for your patience as we work to conduct this hybrid meeting. We hope there will not be any issues, but be assured that we will do our best to continue the meeting as best we can if there are glitches. Um, so with that, I think next we do roll call. Thank you, Commissioner Miranda. Here. Commissioner Berube. Here. Commissioner Elkire. Here. Commissioner Bartling. Here. Commissioner Miranda. Oh, my apologies. Com Commissioner Strauss. Oh, here. <laughs> Commissioner Cullen. Here. Chair Agnew. Here. All right, next on the agenda is the approval of the meeting agenda. Could I ask a clarifying question about the agenda? So I, I thought when I re was doing my homework that um, we, we had two public hearings but now I see one of the public hearing, what I think was under public hearings is under reports and recommendations. So is, is the agenda correct? It is because we already held and closed the public hearing for that matter. They are coming back to us. And so it's a, just something that we need to address the actual variance of not have another public hearing. All right, thanks for the clarification, Madam Chair. I move to approve the agenda as submitted. I second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Miranda. Aye. Commissioner Berube. Aye. Commissioner Elkire. Aye. Commissioner Bartling. Aye. Commissioner Strauss. Aye. Chair Agnew. Aye. All right. Uh, and then next we have the approval of the meeting minutes. Any discussion? I have one clarification for the minutes. And that is um, section 7A, um, the address is just um, within the body of the paragraph, it's listed as 494, it should be 4904. So I think it, it's probably self-evident, but we should probably correct that. And once that's approved, I would move to uh, approve the minutes as submitted. I had one other oh. uh, change. On the bottom of page two, where it mentions our affordable housing coordinator, it's Stephanie Hawkinson, I believe. So if we could just correct that, that'd be great. 
So can I second your motion? I'll second the motion to approve the minutes. All right, Liz. Commissioner Miranda? Aye. Commissioner Berube? Aye. Commissioner Elkire? Aye. Commissioner Bartling? Aye. Commissioner Strauss? Aye. Chair Agnew? Aye. All right, those meeting minutes pass with those changes um, to the address and then the name. Okay, next up we have our community comment. During community comment, uh, the board, the commission, will invite residents to share relevant issues or concerns. Individuals must limit their comments to three minutes. I will limit potentially the number of speakers on the same issue if they're in the interest of time. Uh, I don't necessarily see we'll have that tonight. Uh, generally speaking, items that are elsewhere on tonight's agenda may not be addressed during the community comment. Uh, individuals should expect um, the commission members to respond, should not expect the commissioners to respond to their comments tonight. Instead, we will refer the matter to staff, consideration at a future meeting. So with that, is there anyone who would like to provide community comment tonight? Nope, all right. Um, do I have to move to close the community? Thank you. All right, so next up on the agenda is our first public hearing. Um, so who are you presenting tonight? Awesome. On, Dan? Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, tonight, the request is for a 1.16 first floor elevation variance for a new home at 4913 Sunny Slope Road East. 4913 Sunny Slope Road East is located west of Minnehaha Creek. East, on the east side of the intersection of Sunny Slope Road East and Dale Drive, the existing home is a one and three quarter story home with a tuck under garage that was built in 1941. The applicant is requesting a 1.16 foot first floor height variance for a teardown for a new home. Um, the variance request is to allow the first floor of the new home to sit 2.16 feet higher than the existing first floor, 1.16 feet higher than the allowed one foot height increase. There is FEMA flood elevation on the subject property, therefore the lowest floor is required to be no less than 890.2. The proposed lowest floor elevation of the new dwelling sits at 890.1, or 890.9, excuse me. There's also a local flood elevation shape, um, and so the lowest, due to that local flood elevation, um, the lowest opening elevation in the front of the home is 894.2. With the exception of the first floor elevation, the proposed project meets all other zoning requirements, so it meets the required setbacks, lot coverage, and height. Staff believes that the variance criteria is met in this instance. The practical difficulty is caused by the floodplain elevation and the basement elevation requirement. The applicant has designed the proposed home where it will comply with the overall height, which is measured from average existing grade, and the increase in the first floor elevation will allow for standard basement height on the new home, basement ceiling height, excuse me, for the new home. The variance allows for the new home basement to be placed outside of the flood zone. There's not FEMA flood elevation requirements and local flood shapes on every single family zone lot. The allowable structure height as is measured from average existing grade and the proposed height, the proposed structure meets those height requirements. The proposed home reflects um, the character of the neighborhood. The maximum height from existing grade will conform even with the increase in first floor elevation. The home is appropriate in size and scale for the lot, and the variance request as proposes raises the subject's first floor, subject property's first floor um, elevation to be more similar to the two adjacent properties on either side. The properties on either side of the subject property have a first floor elevation of roughly 904.5 feet. So tonight with that, staff's recommendation is to approve the 1.16 foot first floor elevation variance at 4913 Sunny Slope Road East based on the conditions and um, findings that are listed in your staff report. With that, um, here are the proposed elevations for all sides of the new home, as well as renderings that show perspective. And the applicant also provided um, a drawing that shows where the um, subject property sits in relation to the neighbors on either side. 
And with that, I can take any questions and the applicants also here tonight, and I believe they have a short presentation for you as well. Great, thank you. Do we have any questions for Emily? Sheila. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, quick question for you. There was a comment in Better Together about the tree on the north side. Um, can you address that? I think the applicant was planning on presenting to addressing Perfect. that in his presentation. So I'll let him okay. start with that. Thank if you. That's okay. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Berube. No other questions? All right. We can move on to the presentation then from the applicant. Appreciate you guys coming out, listening to our request. Um, this lot was had quite. I'm sorry. Somebody says. Oh, uh, the slot had quite a few uh, difficulties. Uh, number one, uh, when it was built, 1941. This addition in the back, and I can draw the line across because it's not really shown here in the survey. This was not here. That was built in 1993. Now. Back in 1993, there was different rules and regulations and such. Even though the first floor did comply with the high water mark, this is not shown, but it actually steps down three steps and does not meet the, the high water mark. Additionally, it doesn't meet the 50 foot setback. We've corrected that. I'll show you what the. So we've done the 50 foot setback and the uh, lowest floor elevation to be 2.01 above the high water mark. Additionally, we kept, uh, we could have gone to like 25% lot coverage. Uh, we kept this to uh, 21.6. Uh, some people have said, oh, you know, it looks massive. But if you actually look at the home and we did Google Earth, and you guys have a picture of this. It actually fits really nicely. And I know this because I've built four homes back there, so this would be my fifth. And I kind of um, address, I went out and met with the neighbors prior to the cards coming out, uh, both sides and across the street and such. And the concern was the tree. Um, and that oak tree is located on the property right here. I spoke with Zuli down at the City of Engineering. Um, there was never an easement on this property. We're going to be putting in the easement. In my experience of building here in Edina, it's always been 10 feet to the storm sewer. She, I got the email. She told me five feet, which helped us and the neighbor to the north. The neighbor was concerned about the tree. We were concerned about the tree. So instead of having just a 10-foot setback, we put it closer to the storm sewer so it would be 15 feet, getting away from the drip line. Additionally, we had Davies Tree Service out already. They did a vertical ground mulching, um, some fertilization soil care, and uh, uh, some other plant care that they did to it. And they're gonna continue on with that. Now I know how to deal with those trees because if, I wish I had a picture, there's a tree across up on the hill that, um, was around during the Civil War era, back when I built this house six years ago. And we were like, literally from me to you guys, we dug around it and then we hand dug, hey, the whole kit and caboodle, it's still there today. I'm really proud of that. And I, I can't guarantee it, but I'm gonna do every effort to keep this tree where it is too. So um, the one thing that I think Emily didn't, well you did, kind of throw out numbers, but the, the, the red line here actually represents the average first floor for the neighbors. We're proposing the green line, which we're still about 2.7 feet below their average height, 
And this is what we're proposing or asking or like to, to receive. So any questions on? Go ahead, Commissioner Burby. Thank you for that. Um, if I understand correctly, the, the reason you need the extra elevation is because without that extra, um, basically one point, call it 1.2, the ceiling in the basement is gonna be like seven and a half-ish. Roughly, yeah. Okay, in order to accommodate the flood. Correct. Plane as, or the. Yeah, so we're. we're that variance. would be seven, eight, over seven, eight. Yeah, so we're, we're, okay. we're, we corrected the problem to the creek with the 50 feet. Mm -hmm. We worked with the neighbor to the north to get away from the tree. We uh, worked with Zuli uh, Engineering. And even the front actually has a high water mark. Where we're stuck is for our request. And that's why we're here to, tonight to ask you. And we, we didn't, you know, knowing and, and doing this before, we're not asking for nine, eight, nine feet. It's eight foot ten, uh, clear, and and so, uh, hopefully that's a reasonable request. So with the variance, you'll get eight feet ten and nine in nine inches. Eight foot ten, clear. Eight foot ten. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. I had a question. You so to follow up from Commissioner Berube. So if I understand it, the lowest first floor elevation, or excuse me, the lowest floor elevation is 890.2, and you're proposing 890.9, so that's about eight and a half inches. Uh, we're actually proposing uh, 901.67. Basement elevation. Oh, for the, the basement floor. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Uh, our basement floor is... That was done in. So I had 890.2 and 890 as the, as the. Um, yeah, so our proposed floor, you're right. Uh, it's 890.91. Right, so it's 0.7 feet higher than the lowest it could be, if I'm doing my math correctly, which is about eight and a half inches. And the total variance is for 14-ish. So it seems like eight, and, just my, I guess this is what I'm asking you. If eight and a half inches, if the building could, if the basement could be eight and a half inches lower and the variance is for 14 inches, why don't you just lower the basement eight and a half inches and we, you got rid of two thirds well, of the variance? We're at the difference between the base flood and the proposed lower level floor is right at 2.01 and you have to maintain that two feet above that high water mark. Yeah. Uh, I, he, I'll, I'll, I have a similar thing to say, so I'll just go on it. Maybe it'll make it clarified. <laughs> Might not um, I'm just curious, what needs to be eight foot nine, the fish room or the arcade or <laughs> the game room? I just mean, eight foot is more than plenty, and I see where you're going with it. We don't, it's already over the variance, um, you know, if, you know, extremity, like really pushing that. I also know with your roof structure, you could do various roof structures to get that height if you really wanted to and still not, and then and not require a variance. Um, oh. So I guess the question is why do you really have to have the eight foot nine? Eight foot nine basement is what you're asking me? Yes. Well, standard new construction is generally nine feet when you're building a home. But for, for the most part, I'm not saying that that's all of it, okay? Um, we're just, because at the end of the day, if we, we tried this with like eye joists, like one foot eye joists. Um, the problem we ran into is you have to drop the soffits down uh, to make all the heating and cooling work. So we end up about, it's like seven foot six. So we, yeah, yeah you, but it's not, it, it's okay. <laughs> we could, we'll argue this back and forth all day long, but. Hold on, I'm, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to understand. Um, this, in my opinion, 
in my professional opinion, you could do this with uh, open web joists, steel joists, if you really wanted to have that clearance. I know it costs more money. Um, I'd but, say if you are do building a 2,000 square foot home and you are, you are being pushed into a lot with very setback situations or whatever, I would be a lot more open to a higher ceiling. When you're dub more than doubling the size of the home that's there, um, I, as the character of it may fit the neighborhood, the reason it's starting to become part of the neighborhood is because we, all these small, adorable homes are being tear, torn down and all these bigger homes are being built. But to me, I, I don't find that there is an actual, um, I guess, you know, a, a situation where you're being, where it's, you know, impossible to do. It, it's, it's possible to do, but we end up with less than eight feet. Because mm. there's, no. so if we did like, so we tried Maybe. this with 14 inch web trusses, to your point, we can't get our heating and cooling through, the, or heating ducts. And so we said, well, okay. How, that's the purpose of the open web truss. Right, but with a 14 inch, the average, or the mean. But you wouldn't have to have 14. Right. Well, if we if we did anything more, we'd go above the one foot. Sure, but even then, there you can do that. Do that. You can make it work. Um, and I, if there's soffit pieces or brand or whatever, it needs to be done. But I guess back to what what he had mentioned to begin with. Let's just say it, you stay with the design that you have. Why do you need eight foot nine? I I, I guess. Uh, if we stay with the design and the variance doesn't pass, we're not going to end up at even close to eight. We're going to obviously be below eight. I'm just, you'll we'll still be, there'll be a variance. There'll be a differential, but it will be, what is it, seven inches instead of uh, 14 or 16 inches? So it, it reduces it half, where I'd be personally a little more giving to that um, because you're trying, I would say eight foot is reasonable. Um, 710 gets tight. Um, it's still livable. 710 is still livable. But I'm saying it gets tight, but 8 foot is very livable, and I'd be more um, prone to approve it than what right. you're asking. I, and I just want to reiterate the web truss thing, you know, with 14 inches working. You can't run a 14 inch duct through the 14 inches. We're not inch. even talking about that. We're okay. saying you do 24 inch, whatever you're proposing here. Yeah, I was pro we were But it's an 8 foot ceiling, not an 8 foot 9. Okay. Understood. Okay. That's all, that's all I've got. Do any other commissioners have questions? Yeah, I think I need to. I'm sorry, I need to go back to my original no, question. Fine. So I guess to try to ask this properly, the, so in the proposal, the f lowest floor elevation is about nine inches higher than it needs to be. Uh, if I'm doing the math correctly. Nine inches higher than it used to be. Because you're proposing 890.9, .9 and the minimum is 890.2. So I guess my question is, why, why are you giving um, up eight inches it's there? Actually, it's actually the base flood is 888.9, and we're proposing the lower level at 890.91. So we're 0 .01 above the high water mark. All right, let me double check that. We can go, we can go on. You can go on. Okay. Any other commissioners with questions? Did that answer your question or am I not answering your question? No, I think I need to go back to the staff report and check something, but thank you. I have a question and this might be better suited for staff. Um, is for the city, is there a, a standard? Is there an average of what we see for basements? Um. I talked with Chris, um, who does the majority of the city's plan review for new homes, and she said that the ceiling height that's proposed with this house is pretty standard with what she sees with new homes. The eight foot 10. Yes. Thank you. This is with, from the engineer's report. that said the lowest floor is required to be low, no less than 890.2. Okay. Your proposed is 890.2. Oh, I see, I see why the, the question is. Well, how did we? To that, that, that was from 
but that's not we, what we had on the survey for the high water mark. So that's what she has with her information that's shown. Well, then, to your point, well, I'll just dig it seven inches deeper. I mean, that's from Zuli. Okay. Uh, to your point, I mean, this, we, we don't, we have, we have 890, oh, I see, no. Yeah, proposal is for elevation. So where's the floodplain? She has it. We're just looking at the engineer's memo, then so he's just looking at the information that Zuli has provided in that engineering memo um, with the flood elevations, the required flood elevations. So she has the annual flood elevation at 888.2. Right. And so she has the no less than 890.2. Yeah, and that's what we're proposing. You have your lowest floor elevation at 890.91. Okay, and that, that's why. That's where the, that's where the confusion is. I see. I see, so, yeah, that's, I can see your point now that, um, I think we have a few numbers mixed up here, this is part of the problem. <laughs> because if we can, I can get to, uh, to your point, if I can dig this seven feet, or seven inches deeper, probably make those web trusses work. Make sense? Yeah, I, I don't know why we, I have to actually look at what the... We'll just take a few minutes here to confirm the numbers. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. So, so a couple of options here as we as we <laughs> proceed here for the planning commission, um, you could, <clears throat> if you decided to take action tonight, you know, you could table it to straighten all this out. But another option is at a condition that the low floor needs to be per the city engineer's recommendation and that that ceiling height be lowered seven inches accordingly. The basement ceiling height. So just something to, to think about. Yeah, I found the discrepancy on our survey. The, the base flood is 888.9, and that's Zuli's is the difference we're talking about. Hers is actually lower than what we thought it was. So. Our surveyor and Zuli's numbers don't jive, and that's where I think the confusion is. To your point about like, hey, like, why are you raising it seven inches and then another foot and whatever? Because we're basing everything off of what our survey said, not what Zuli's. Wow. So, are we yeah. sure that what Zuli has written is correct? Because the surveys would be more something that I would follow than what Zuli wrote. I, I'm just, you know. Yeah, not, not, I'm just, just want us to be clarified, that's all. Um, Zuli's memo says it's per the FEMA map. So um, that's what the information that she's provided to us. Um, I think, like Carrie said, you could make a motion to kind of deal with that in terms of, you know, you can make it, make a motion in a way where we can confirm that number. Well, the bottom line is the way you design the house is it will have ceilings that are eight feet, nine and three eighths inches. Correct, on the lower Regard, level. I mean, and, you, and you're asking for yeah, a variance. Yeah, at the end of the day, of, that's kind of where we want to end up. And you're with, asking for a 1.16 well, height on, variance on the elevation. Based on our survey, not on Zuli's, because yeah. to your guys' point, hers is seven inches lower, so we wouldn't be asking for that much. Okay. If, if the if we could go seven inches lower, we wouldn't need one point. That, that's yeah. why the math is not working for anybody here because. But that would be the maximum then. I'm sorry. It would be the maximum is as you as it was submitted in the staff packet, and it could be less than that if it's. Yeah, yeah this would be the maximum, but obviously using Zuli's numbers, It'd we could less. drop that seven. Yeah. The, or the difference between my 888.9 and Zuli's um, number. 
Okay. What is Lily's number again, please? Um, in the engineering memo, Zuli's provided that the 1% annual, annual flood elevation is 888.2, so the lowest floor is required to be no less than 890.2, because it's required to sit two feet higher than the FEMA elevation. Are there any other questions for the applicant? Otherwise, we can go to the public hearing. All right. We will go to the public hearing, and I have things. Um, so we will now hear from residents who would like to provide testimony. If you are participating remotely, call in now at 1-800-374-0221 with conference ID 4795881. An operator will ask you for your name and street address and put you in a queue to speak after you press star one. We will hear from those in the room and then move to those on the phone. You may speak for up to three minutes. After giving your full name and address, the green light on your podium will turn on. When you have 30 seconds remaining, the yellow light will turn on, and when you are out of time, the red light will turn on. Staff will let anyone who calls in know if they go over the three minutes. Um, and so remember, it is not necessary to provide testimony if you've already provided comments via voicemail or bettertogetheredina.org. Call in if you have new comments or information to bring forward. Is there anyone in the room here who would like to provide public testimony? Seeing none in the room, I will go to our call-in. Do we have anyone in the queue? We do not have anyone in the queue. Uh, obviously, there is still a slight delay, so if you want to wait a few seconds, just to give anyone an opportunity. Yes, we'll wait a full minute. It's been right about a minute and we don't have any callers on the line. All right, thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? I move to close the public hearing. Second. Roll call is? Commissioner Miranda? Aye. Commissioner Berube? Aye. Commissioner Elkire? Aye. Commissioner Bartling? Aye. Commissioner Strauss? Aye. Commissioner Bennett? Aye. Chair Agnew? Aye, thank you. The public hearing is closed. And I should have asked for this clarification like three roll calls ago, but should we, can we just do voice vote since we're all in person? I think in this hybrid time, we still need to do the, okay. yep. Thank you. Uh, okay, are there any other questions um, for staff or the applicant about this matter? All right, would anyone like to make a motion? Chair, sure, I do have a comment. Go ahead. Uh, just um, responding to, it was a, just a, a very recent submittal. Um, I think it came in through a, a verbal or a voice um, the comment. It was by a neighbor and, uh, and I guess that, that it didn't fit, you know, the character of uh, which an in-person visit to that neighborhood, it's hard to see or see how this particular project doesn't fit the character of the neighborhood. And I, though the, the comment was made that all of the boundaries were kind of pushed, but I don't think that's the point. I think they, they achieved them all. They got all, they met all the setbacks and other than the FEMA elevation and what I thought was most uh, pleased with was the overall height came in. So I think they're, I like, I think it's a good project. Thanks. 
Thank you. Other comments? I, I'll just follow up with and um, say that I'm influenced by the roof eleva elevation is actually lower um, than the maximum building height allowed. So they're not asking for a variance, just as Commissioner Strauss mentioned. And that um, the average of the neighboring homes is actually at a higher elevation. So those are two things that are influencing me. And I don't think it's unreasonable to um, have, you know, an eight foot, 10 inch ceiling height in a basement doesn't seem excessive to me. So I am not opposed to this project. Commissioner Alkire. Um, I, I so would endorse um, Commissioner Bruby's and uh, Commissioner Strauss's comments. I feel the same way about the overall project. I would say, however, that I don't see uh, the need for as big a variance. And it's important to me that um, uh, the new home not start at a higher elevation than it needs to and just, you know, exacerbate the problem needlessly. Uh, so I would be, I'm, I'm, uh, I su support the project. However, I would like it to start at 890.2 or whatever we decide is the right number uh, for the, for the lowest floor elevation. Any other comments? Um, my comment would be, I'm just doing some quick numbers. Um, and if it was lowered to the number that Zuli had written in the report and the ceiling was dropped three inches, so eight, six, still very um, decent ceiling height in my opinion, um, there'd be no variance required. So just saying, eight foot six. All right, thank you. Commissioner Berube. I'd be prepared to make a motion if there's no more comments. Please do. Um, I move we approve the variance as submitted in the staff memo subject to conditions and findings in the staff memo. I'll second that. Do we wanna add any um, caveat towards the height, I mean, you said towards the staff memo, but just making sure what Commissioner Alkire said is um, the, the height that we're starting with. You know, I was, based on what I read in the staff material submitted, as well as the materials from the, um, from the applicant, and hearing what was presented today, I don't feel that's necessary, so I would submit my motion regardless. Thank you. And ask for a second. All right. Second, second. Okay. I guess um, just to add to some discussion, I, I mean, I, I would support a condition made just to, I mean, we don't need a, as you mentioned, Commissioner Elker, further exacerbate the issue needlessly. So if we can put a condition and it's just resolved between staff and maybe it is the existing 890.9, .9, whatever it is, I'd support, but if it could be seven inches lower, why not? So I, I won't support this, but I'll support a condition. Okay, so I believe we do have a motion on the table that we should vote on. Uh, and so right now, the motion that is on the table is for the variance as submitted. Um, so let's do the roll call for that. Commissioner Miranda. Nay. Commissioner Berube. Aye. Commissioner Elkire. Nay. Commissioner Bartling. Nay. Commissioner Strauss. Aye. Commissioner Bennett. Nay. Chair Agnew. Aye. That motion failed. The motion failed, thank you. My count was off. Um, so we do want to have a motion. We need to pass something. Um, is there another, anyone else like to make a motion? Uh, I'm not quite sure how to word it, but the motion would in essence be, 
Commissioner Bruby's motion with the addition of a uh, 890.2 uh, first floor elevation or whatever staff determines is the correct minimum number for first floor elevation. That's kind of a long motion, but that's, that's the message anyway. Second. All right, any further discussion on that motion? All right, let's do a roll vote, Liz. Commissioner Miranda. Aye. Commissioner Berube. Aye. Commissioner Elkire. Aye. Commissioner Bartling. Aye. Commissioner Strauss. Aye. Commissioner Bennett. Aye. Chair Agnew. Aye. All right, so that passes. Um, so thank you. Okay, uh, next on our agenda tonight uh, is for 6601 Biscayne Boulevard. Um, this is officially a reports and recommendation. So uh, this is, if people remember, we had, uh, it was about a month ago, uh, we reviewed this proposal through a public hearing. We provided feedback that they, they make some adjustments and come back. And so I believe that is what is happening here tonight. Yes, thank you. Um, the Planning Commission tonight is asked to consider a revised variance request for a 1.3% increase or a 210 square foot increase beyond the allowable 25 square 25% building coverage limit for the property at 6601 Biscayne Boulevard. 6601 Biscayne Boulevard is located on the southwest corner of Londonderry Road and Biscayne. Um, the original request was heard by the Planning Commission on July 14th. The request at that point was for a nine foot rear yard setback variance and a 1.5% increase beyond the allowable 25% building coverage requirement. The applicant was directed by the Planning Commission to consider a redesign of the project to reduce or eliminate the rear yard setback request. The redesign has eliminated the rear yard setback request and has overall reduced the coverage request from 1.5% to 1.3% or 210 square feet over the allowable square lot coverage requirements. The project, oops. Here we go. Um, the project involves removing an existing deck and patio and replacing them with a screened in porch and a smaller deck. Um, the current lot coverage today as the lot is, is at 29.2%. So this would be an overall reduction to 26.3%. The applicant stated at the last meeting that the purpose is to allow enjoyment of their backyard um, from the upper or main level of their home without relying on stairs as they intend to age in place. So just um, to overall highlight um, the revision, the revised plans conform to all setbacks, including that 25 foot rear yard setback, vary, or setback requirement. Um, the previous plans had the addition 16 feet from the rear lot line, which required the nine foot setback variance, which is no longer um, part of the request tonight. The original plan had showed the proposed lot coverage at 26.5%. The new plan tonight shows the lot coverage at 26.3%. The existing property is over on lot coverage today and is at 29.2%. So the proposal will overall bring the existing non-conforming coverage down. And like I said, the purpose of the request is to allow the owner's intent to age in place and to keep the additions on one accessible level. And with that, I can answer any questions and the applicant has a short presentation for you tonight as well. Thank you, Emily. Um, Christopher Strauss. Yes, thank you, Emily. Um, so the previous submittal, it was staff's position not to approve, correct? Not to approve of the lot coverage variance. Well, in the staff but, report. Yes, in the. That, that, that was the. Okay. Yep. And is, and it's staff position that they are to approve for this submittal? Yes. Okay. With the overall increase, the overall brought it down from 29 to the 26.3. All right, thank you. Any other questions for staff? All right, let's move to the applicant. Please come forward and make your presentation. Thank you, um, uh, I'm Christopher Strom. I'm the architect for this uh, proposal and uh, I don't really have anything to add because I think um, 
the staff support seems to be uh, in our favor, but uh, we just wanted to let you know that we did a complete redesign uh, of the project, including the engineering and um, drainage and uh, to, to make this work. So we appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Uh, Commissioner Bennett. Actually, just a comment. Uh, thank you. I make a motion to approve the variance as requested. Second. Any further discussion? Commissioner Miranda. Yeah, I just want to say thank you too for, for reconsidering. I think it's a, a much improved plan. All right, we will go to the roll call, please. Thank you. Commissioner Miranda? Aye. Commissioner Barubi? Aye. Commissioner Alkire? Aye. Commissioner Bartling? Aye. Commissioner Strauss? Aye. Commissioner Bennett? Aye. Chair Agnew? Aye. All right, so that passes. Thank you very much, and again, thank you for, for revising the plans. Best of luck. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, next on the agenda, we have chair and member comments. Are there any comments this week? I don't have any. All right. <laughs> Got to say Miranda. something, right? <laughs> I was waiting. Well, um, since I'm always harping on climate change, I mean, I think we all know that the sixth IPCC report came out uh, earlier this week. So um, I think scientists, without actually yelling and screaming that the house is on fire, are basically doing so. So I think it's uh, incumbent on us to as leaders in the community to uh, make sure that we ensure we push for change for uh, to address climate change. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, we will move to staff comments. Carrie? Uh, yes, thank you. Just a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, the city council meeting. Um, they did take action on the conditional use permit uh, request by Interlock and Country Club and that was approved. Um, so they will um, move forward likely this fall with that construction. And then second, um, just to address the concerns that were raised by a resident from the last meeting, um, she had expressed some concerns about the New Horizon daycare and that process that kind of fed into construction management, um, particularly with the giant dirt pile at 4404. So they had obtained a grading permit, oh, maybe a month or so ago through our engineering department. The idea is to level that out. I contacted um, the property owner at that time and asked them to move along quicker than, uh, than they were doing. And they did assure me, this was a week ago now, that they would have it removed in two to three weeks. So hopefully within the next week or so, the dirt pile will be gone and that site will be um, leveled out. That's all. Wonderful. Thank you. That concludes our agenda. Anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn the meeting. I'll second. All right, Liz. Commissioner Miranda? Aye. Commissioner Berube? Aye. Commissioner Elkire? Aye. Commissioner Bartling? Aye. Commissioner Strauss? Aye. Commissioner Bennett? Aye. Chair Agnew? Aye. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.